the term transcytosis comes up a lot in the literature, which essentially, uh, to my knowledge, just means the movement of these ApoB containing lipoproteins from the the plasma, like in the lumen of the artery, in that inside of the tube, um, through the endothelial sort of cells or between them into the intima, which is the innermost kind of uh, part of the artery wall. Is is that sort of flux, transcytosis, movement of these ApoB containing lipoproteins into the artery wall, is is that normal and happens all the time and they go in and they sort of find their way out and nothing happens um, and it becomes pathological um, when they don't find their way out and become retained for some reason? Yeah, so now you're going to look at, all right, ApoB has somehow gotten through that endothelium, and I'll tell you the ways it does that. But then it's in the, you called it the intima, that's basically the outer connective tissue area uh, of the arterial wall. And there are reasons why that ApoB particle, once it passes through the endothelium, it's going to get stuck there. That ApoB uh, protein on the surface of the particle has great affinity for connective tissue molecules, um, uh, glycoproteins that bind the ApoB particle, and it's like a flies on flypaper. It's stuck. Now, sometimes it's just stuck there and nothing ever happens. Who cares? Very few of them break free and can leach out again back into the plasma, perhaps a f- minuscule number. But once they crash there, they're stuck in the arterial wall. So as they're bound to these proteoglycans in the arterial wall, they can just be bound there forever. And like a mummy, it'll, they'll just ultimately shrink up, add to the connective tissue, and they're of no consequence. Because for atherosclerosis to develop, uh, ApoB cholesterol-containing particle has to be ingested by a macrophage that is in the arterial wall connective tissue. How did the macrophage get in there? A monocyte left the bloodstream. It passes through the endothelium. There are receptors that pull it in. And it transforms into a macrophage in the arterial wall. A macrophage is basically a white blood cell capable of scavenging, eating things. So what makes some of the retained ApoB particles a substrate for receptors on macrophages that they will internalize them? And now if that macrophage keeps internalizing humongous numbers of ApoB cholesterol-carrying particles, before you know it, the macrophage become super cholesterol engorge. They're called foam cells because they look foamy if you look at them in a microscope. And that, if you get a macrophage that turns into a foam cell and you get a few billion of those macrophages, that is plaque. Initially a fatty streak in the artery wall. After that, more localized collections of cholesterol. And over time, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Most of the disease early on is in the wall of the artery. It's not obstructing the arterial wall lumen at all. Sooner or later, bad things can happen. But the million-dollar question is, after the ApoB particle goes through the endothelium, why do some get ingested by macrophages and others do not? A word first about what you said, the transendothelial passage, transcytosis of the ApoB particle. That can occur with perfectly healthy endothelial cells. You do not need an inflamed, disturbed endothelium for that particle to pass right through it. Cavioli, and there's other receptors that just pull those particles through. There is a little gap between endothelial cells, a perivascular sort of channel. They can sneak through that. These are very, very small particles, you know, 20 micrograms, 21 micrograms, uh, grams, uh, millimeters, excuse me, they get in. So, but they certainly can get in with greater frequency if the endothelium happens to be disturbed or inflamed. And most of the inflammation of the endothelium and atherosclerotic disease is because those macrophages I told you about, they start ingesting the particles. They start secreting all these pro-inflammatory cytokines, schenokines, which causes the endothelial dysfunction. So it's ApoB is not bad enough. It's delivering the criminal cholesterol, but then that sets off the inflammation that further destroys your endothelial cells. But there are many human conditions where the endothelial cells might be inflamed before the ApoB particle even shows up. 
um, many of our collagen diseases. Uh, you, you know, the list of inf subtle inflammatory diseases are huge. Even insulin resistance, diabetes. Yeah, you know, think of the people who have subtle elevations of C-reactive protein. Likely many of them have this. Now they have an endothelium that has less protection in keeping an ApoB particle out. So, but it doesn't have to be there. And that's why the young people develop atherosclerosis early because they're not having all these inflammatory conditions. Particles just go right in. So who cares? If a particle gets in, you're in trouble. Whether the endothelium let it in physiologically or you got a destroyed endothelium due to other factors. Is that also where risk factors like high blood pressure and smoking play a role? Do they feed into this the, the, the sort of quality of the endothelium? Even I couldn't give you a list of the pro-inflammatory conditions that probably cause endothelial dysfunction. Hypertension and its effect on nitric oxide would be one. Smoking for whatever chemicals are in, passing through your endothelium there, of course. Autoimmune diseases where the immune system is revved up and creating so many undesirable things. I mentioned insulin resistance, diabetes is a pro-inflammatory state. So the list is long. So uh, try not, to, if you have high ApoB, try not to have any of them. The, the take home message there though, before we move on to the next point is that you're always going to have some movement and flux of these ApoB containing lipoproteins from circulation into the uh, into the intima you can exacerbate that and make it worse if you have other kind of risk factors or um, genetic sort of conditions but it's going to happen because I, th I do think there is this idea out there that well if my endothelium is healthy it doesn't actually matter if i have elevated levels of yeah. ldl cholesterol unfortunately that is circulating all over the internet they go out and they do some inflammatory marker in the bloodstream and it's normal and they declare themselves immortal <laughs> it's silly high apob listen fh which is a genetic condition of too many apob particles that certainly causes premature atherosclerosis is not typically associated with inflammatory markers. You know? so, but those, and those are big ApoB particles that have no trouble just going passing through the endothelium because their concentration is so high. So uh, yes, it's always a complicated story, but never ever say yeah, ApoB high, that's bad. But if I don't have inflammation, I can't get atherosclerosis. Sooner or later, you will have inflammation because once the particle goes in and gets ingested by the macrophage, boom, now you have a pro-inflammatory state and then the endothelium will become dysfunctional at a certain point as uh, cholesterol gets deposited.